Welcome students to your first T-Pop Science video tutorial. Now this tutorial I'm going to admit is going to be kind of long. Most of them aren't going to be this long, but that's because I want to show you everything you need to know about Schoology. Now I realize that a lot of you already know about Schoology, you used it before, but this tutorial is to specifically teach you how to use it in my class, because I might do things differently than what you're used to. So go ahead and grab a device, whether it's your own phone, it could be a Chromebook you checked out for me, or it could be the computer you're on right now. But go ahead, if you need to open up a new tab, do so and follow along. Let's go ahead and get started. All right, so let's go ahead and get started with Schoology. I'm going to go ahead and open the app. So I'm going to assume that you know how to download the app from either the um, iPhone store, the Apple App Store, or the Play Store. But I'm going to go ahead and open up the Schoology app. Now when I do that, it's going to give me two options to log in. There's an email login or a username login. I'm going to go ahead and choose username login. There's three preferences I need in order to do username login. The first one is school. So clicking on school, I'm going to go ahead and type in ISD12. When I type in ISD12, a pop-up menu is going to show up and it's going to say, okay, is this one of the schools you want? Go ahead and click on Centennial School District in Circle Pines. And that chooses the right area for us to get into. Next is the username. Currently, the username for Centennial is your graduation year. So if you're going to graduation, if you're going to graduate in um, one five in 2015, you're going to start with that um, or 2016 and so on and so forth. Then type in the first five letters of your first name and the first five letters of your last name. Finally, the last thing you're going to do is type in your password. Um, now, you, hopefully you changed your default password, and if you haven't done so, I recommend doing so before you log into Schoology. That way you don't have to do it again. But go ahead and type in your password. When you're all done with that, go ahead and click on Sign In with, to Schoology. So if you are not using your phone and you're rather using a Chromebook or a computer, that's absolutely great. In fact, you can do everything online that you can do on the app version. So I'm going to go ahead and just show you really quick that just like we logged in before, I'm going to come to Schoology.com. You can also go to Centennial.Schoology.com, and it actually takes you one last step. But if you go to Schoology.com, you come over here to the top right corner and click on Login. It's going to give you a drop-down menu, and you have the same couple of things. So it says email or username. Go ahead and just type in your username. I'm going to go ahead and type in one five and then the first five letters of my first name, the first five letters of my last name, and then I'm going to go ahead and type in my password. Notice when I clicked on password, I had a third thing pop up, just like we had before. Uh, that's my school. We'll get to that in a second and go ahead and go ahead and type in my password. And then finally, my school or zip code. I'm going to go ahead and type in ISD. 12, and the pop-up menu is going to pop up, and there is my school district. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that. Uh, notice it says that, did you mean to log in from centennial.schoology.com? Well, yeah, this is just the same way to get to that same spot, but centennial.schoology.com will get me there faster. I'm showing you the longer way, but you can always do the faster way. Okay, so you computer users, I want to show you really quick where to find the things on the computer. I'm going to spend a majority of the time on the app, but I just want to show you that you can do everything you can on the app on the computer. Uh, so first of all, at the top is this course button. This is where you find your courses as well as join a course. And if you follow along later, I'll show you how to actually do that. But once you join a course, it will appear here. And then once you're in the course, and I'm just choosing a general course, all of your options are found on this front page. There's the updates right here, which I'll talk about in the app. Here's the material section. Here's the upcoming section. And then right next to the upcoming, if you click the calendar itself, is the whole full-blown calendar. So you have all the options here as well. But I'm going to talk about it more in depth in the app version. And while I go through that, go ahead and please follow along on the computer as right. well. So when you first come into Schoology, the first page is going to pop you up into is your recent activities page. I'm going to ignore that for now. And I'm going to go ahead and click on my side menu, the upper left-hand corner of those three slashes. When my side menu pops open, I'm given a lot more options. Now, again, you might have less options than I do. Um, uh, based on you being students and me being more of a teacher and course admin, uh, but that's okay. I want to show you the most important parts. Let's go ahead and click on courses. 
courses is where we're going to go ahead and see the courses that we've signed up for as well as sign up for different courses. So here's all of my courses. Now yours might be blank. So let's go ahead and sign up for a course. I'm going to click on the plus menu on the upper middle. And what's going to happen is it's going to ask me for an access code. This is just a digit with a dash in the middle uh, that I will give to you or your, ask your instructor for or check your syllabus because a lot of times they're on there. Now I'm going to go ahead and just put in a fake code. It doesn't really matter if it's capitalized or not, but you go ahead and put in your course access code, not the one I just put. So go ahead and click on join, and when you do so, you're going to be able to have your course will appear in your courses section. So here's all the courses that I have signed up for, I'm admins for. Again, the ones with crowns, you won't see crowns because you're not part of an admin of a course, but go ahead and click on the course that you just appeared for you. For me, I'm going to go ahead and click on physical science one hour one, um, but you can click on chemistry or whatever other courses that you just signed up for. They all run the same way. When I click on physical science hour one, it takes me to the material section right away. Now I'm going to kind of start at the top and work my way down and show you the ins and outs of the things you need to know. So a couple important things. So click on the very top, it says materials. That's actually a drop down menu. And if you click on that, you'll get a few more options. The ones I want to show you are updates and upcoming. So updates is basically kind of like a Twitter or a Facebook feed update for this course. Here I might ask you guys some questions, I might post a video, um, just mostly practice and kind of give you some general information, but this is kind of a, a good place to go for just, you know, some better, more extra instruction. Go ahead and click on that menu up at the top again where it says updates, and this time I'm going to click on upcoming. Now, upcoming is kind of a preview calendar. It's just a kind of a step-by-step -step calendar of what's going to be coming up within the next few days. Now, I'll try to get quizzes and tests on there as well as big projects and things that are due so you know what's upcoming. Um, but I'll also have some of the things that we do each day posted up. Now, pray tell, some of these things are subject to change, especially, you know, class time and class events. Sometimes things change last minute, so you can always come back and check. Dealing with upcoming, I'm going to go ahead and click on the side menu again, that three dashes, um, and I want to show you the calendar. So I'm going to click on back, go back to all of my side menu options, and I want to click on calendar. Now calendar is directly related to updates, only calendar shows me things not only upcoming, but well as things that have happened. This is a useful place for you guys to go if you ever miss a day and you wanted to know what we did on previous days, uh, you can go ahead and do that. I've had students gone for weeks or even months and they can come back here and actually preview what's happened previously. So any of those days that have a little dot on them, if you actually click on the day, it will tell you what's happening on those days. So I can go forward, you know, go to the second, um, September 2nd, you know, it says bring your lab notebook. I can go on Friday and there's quizzes happening in a few of my classes. Uh, I can go back to Tuesday and see what we did on previous day and actually click on the item and it tells you what's going on in each of those days. So if you click on that, it gives you kind of an outline. So I'm going to go back and I want to go back to my course, so I just clicked on the back button at the upper left hand corner, or however you go back in your Apple or Android device. And now I'm going to go back to the materials section. So clicking on upcoming at the top, I'm going to go ahead and click on materials and go back to that original page. This is the landing page, the page that it always goes on when you first click on a course. And this is the most important information you're going to need. You will be visiting this page often on your device or on a Chromebook uh, because these this is how you access the course materials. Um, it's kind of a, a one place for all type thing. The first thing I want to show you is the lab notebook. So again, I'm going to start at the top and work our way down. You will be required to bring a lab notebook to class. And if you want to know what goes in what page, this lab notebook is the table of contents and it tells you everything about all the stuff. Uh, so you can really quickly see what goes in your table of contents. And I'll show you how to do this in class more. I'm going to click on back, the back button. 
Next, these folders are course folders, and they include the materials for each of the lessons and each of the units that we do. Overall, we'll probably have about five or six units in the class, and right now only a few units are shown at a time. We have this 0.0, .0 unit, which is not really a unit. It's kind of a, a get-to-know-you unit. It's kind of a get-to-know-the-course unit. And then we have the official unit one. So you can actually click on each of these and it will tell you a little bit more information about that unit. So I'm going to go ahead and click on the first official unit, Unit 1, Matters and Atoms, and kind of go in there. Now, as we go through the unit, there's a lot of things you need to know. The most important thing is the learning targets. Now, if you're using an Apple device, I forgot to mention that your your page probably won't go to a new page. It will probably just expand down. So you might need to scroll up or down depending on where we are. But I'm going to go ahead and click on this learning targets. Now it's what it's going to do is it might ask you to open up a different program. For me, it's going to ask me to open Google Docs, another program I really recommend to have open. So I'm going to click on that. And it's going to show me the learning targets for this unit. Now the learning targets we'll talk about more often, but they're one of the most important things you need to know to be prepared for the test and the final assessments for this class. Now everything revolves around the learning targets, which is why I want to emphasize it a little bit. You'll notice that each of the targets have a, has a specific number associated with it. So the first one is 1.1a, 1.1b is the next one, 1.1c. All of those are from unit one, lesson one. So there's three targets you kind of need to fulfill or do for the first lesson. You know, define matter using terms such as mass and volume, compare and contrast mass and weight, and determine the volume of objects. So it could be one example. Next below that, if I scroll down, would be 1.2, which again is unit one, lesson two. And there's three targets to go along with that, at least for the physical science class. So going back, I'm going to head back onto Schoology by pushing my back button. Um, that's the learning targets, and I put that at the very top because it is the absolute essential. Below that, you'll see some more folders, and I want to point out that these folders are numbered the same way the learning targets are numbered, and there's a reason for that. These numbers coincide with those learning targets. This is where you get the information and the stuff, the resources to fulfill those learning targets. So by the time we take the test or the quiz or whatever we're doing, we're prepared for it. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that first lesson, and they're all pretty much associated the same way. I'm going to click on that first lesson, lesson 1.1, which is matter. So that's unit one, lesson one matter. And it's going to give me a few things. Again, it's going to give me another folder that's called resources or 1.1 resources. This is kind of a place for you to explore. I might make you go in there and see some things, but this is a great place to show you, and I'm going to go ahead and click on it. This is a great place to show you where to get many, many resources for you to learn and to be prepared for that target. You know, I'll be the first to admit you don't, I'm not the only person that can teach you this content. In fact, the more, the best way to learn is to learn kind of on your own and by yourself. I'll help you facilitate learning and I will be there for you to help you learn in any way, shape, and form. And I will suggest many ways, but I want you to find your best mode of learning. So here in this resources, the resources section might be filled up with many things. Uh, I try to find as much, as many resources as I can to help you learn that target. Now here I have a textbook. And if you click on that textbook, it's a page that tells you where in the official class textbook that you can actually go and read about matter and measurements. And these are the things that you'll need in order to pass those targets. Um, sometimes I'm going to click on back. Sometimes I might give you video. So I'm going to go ahead and click on video. And in fact, I'll probably have you watch video lessons and video tutorials either as assignments at home or in class assignments. But here's a couple examples. There's the YouTube version of this video or the download version of this video. Now the YouTube version just takes you directly to the YouTube. You don't have to download anything. It doesn't take any space. It's pretty quick. But if you're nowhere near or you know you're not going to be near an access point and you want to watch the video, you can download the version at home and watch it in the bus right here if you need to or watch it later. It's just a temporary download. So here, let me go ahead and show you again the YouTube version. We'll just open the YouTube app. I'm not going to go ahead and do that. Um, 
but you can go ahead and open up that YouTube app and it will open up. But if you click on the download version, it might take a moment and actually download it. Now this is a temporary download, so I might recommend doing this at home where you have internet connection. And then like I said, if you're on the way to school on the bus, or you know, you're walking or wherever you are, you can actually watch this video. Now, if you exit out of the video, that temporary download goes away. But in the meantime, it's gonna just download a temporary download version so you can watch it offline, which is really kind of cool. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on back and click on cancel and click on back. And I'm gonna go back to the materials tab and again, there's a lot of materials will appear here. There could be websites, there could be lots of things. And I'm gonna go back one more time. I'm just clicking that back to 1.1 matter button. Um, but here, the next two things I wanna show you under resources. So we're now back to the uh, unit one or the 1.1 tab in matters and atoms. And I wanna show you a couple different things you need to know. So these files in here are classroom files. These aren't just extra resources. These are required resources that we do in class. So we might do practice assignments. This would be like homework or practice sets. Those will appear here. We might do a lab and I'm not going to give you a lab sheet to fill out. I might expect you to actually click on the directions of the lab. And here, let me go ahead and do that. I'm going to actually have to just click on the direction of the lab and you can follow along with the lab on the device. So cutting down on paper, cutting down on a lot of things, I want to give you the content and you can access it at any time and refer to it at any time. Um, but the lab directions and all of that will be here found on Schoology. So you kind of, it's kind of a hybrid between a, a paperless classroom and a flipped classroom. There's lots of things here um, th that are resources for you guys. Many of them are, are required. So I'm going to go ahead and click on back a few times and I click back to 1.0 matter. So we were just in the lesson 1.1, which is unit one, lesson one entitled matter. And that all had to deal with that first learning target or that first set of learning targets that you need to know. As we move on and we go forth, more learning targets and more lessons will appear. Some of them are hidden from you right now, but more will appear and we can go ahead and learn those things. But again, I'm trying to empower you guys to have all this information here for you so you can access it at any time to help yourself learn and grow and do things. The last thing I'm gonna point out to you guys is at the very bottom is a test. Now, um, tests are usually closed until test day, but actually you can take the assessments that we take in class on your device. Now, this is an option and I, I like I said, you can use the devices I have in class, but you will be taking the tests on the device to hopefully get instant results and instant feedback. And that's kind of the key here. I want you guys to be empowered with the knowledge to know whether you're doing well or not. Whew, I know that was an extremely long video. Thank you so much for sticking with me. They're not going to be that long again. They'll be a lot shorter, but we'll, hopefully we got through everything. Again, we talked about logging into Schoology. We talked a little bit about how the classes run via Schoology, but you really need to know how to do it. It is an absolute essential resource for you in this class and one that hopefully empowers you to learn better, uh, one that you can take control of your own learning and you can figure out how things are done. If you have any questions at all, please don't hesitate to ask me. You can talk to me personally. You can send me an email, phone call whatever you need to do to get it done. I'm here to help you. I'm your resource, just as Schoology is your resource. We'll hopefully see you next time.